Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're looking at Sierra chart and we're going to talk about studies today. We're going to talk about how to add a study to your chart and kind of customize it to your preferences. So let's take a look at my screen here. We're looking at just a regular daily ES chart and we're going to talk about adding some studies. So to add a study or look at the studies that we have available by default to us within Sierra chart, we need to go to the studies window. There's two ways that we can do that. We can go uh, First off, uh, using the toolbar and go to the SW button, which stands for Studies Window. And again, that will bring up our Studies Window. So in the left-hand side, we can see all the studies that we have available to us by default. And you can see there are quite um, a number of them that we can choose from. Now, if I wanted to add, uh, for example, uh, just an ADX study, I can do that just by selecting it and then clicking the Add button here. And you'll notice that it shows up in the right hand side. So the left hand side will give us all the studies that are available and the right hand side are going to be the ones that are going to go onto our actual chart. So let's select OK here and we'll see the ADX uh, did plot on our chart added here in the lower panel. Now the ADX is a little bit big for me so if I wanted to resize this uh, for example I just go to the Y axis here and if I kind of hover between the price bars axis and the actual study axis here um, we can go ahead and just find this white line, which we can drag down to uh, kind of resize it. Now we can also add in multiple studies. So I don't have to have just the ADX and then open up another chart and then add a different uh, study. I can have multiple ones on the same chart. So to do that, I can use uh, that studies window again. Now we can, of course, use that SW button here, but we can also just right mouse click within our chart. So if I right mouse click here, we see that we have a studies option available. So if I click on that, that brings us back to that same window that we saw before. And now we just need to add another study right onto our chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a moving average. So I'm going to go back to the moving averages here, kind of scroll down to the M's. And what you'll also notice here is if, uh, if I was up here all the way at the top, I can just type in my keyboard an M and that'll bring us all the way down to the M's. Or I can keep typing, uh, for example, MO, MOV will bring us down to the moving averages. I'm just going to use a regular simple moving average, so I'll add that to our chart, and then we'll select OK. Now the moving average is one of those indicators that most people like to have overlaid right onto your price bar, so you'll see that is by default set to overlay in the same panel as my price bars, and these are called chart regions. So the price bars are actually in chart region 1, and the moving average decided to go ahead and display right on that chart region 1 as well. So our ADX is in a second chart region or chart region 2. Now what I noticed right off the bat with my moving average is it's kind of the same color as the ADX but also the same color as some of my price bars here. So I think it'd be a little bit easier to see if I kind of change that and uh, we'll pop out a little bit more. I'll be able to do um, just some easier analysis with maybe a different color just to kind of make it to my preferences. We can do that as well using that studies window. So I'm going to right mouse click again and select studies. And then we'll go to the moving average here. I'll highlight that. And then I'll select settings. That'll bring up a separate window. And what we want to go to is the subgraphs tab here. So I'm going to click on the subgraphs tab. And you'll see we can alter how the actual study looks. So things like the draw style, line style. Uh, for now, I'm just going to focus on the color. So I'll select this color box. And we'll see that it's a green. You can choose just about any color here just by using kind of the rainbow box here. And as well as the sliders to kind of fine tune it. I'm just going to use a regular blue color. And then we'll select OK. And then OK. And then OK one more time. And then I'll change that color for us. So now I can see that a little bit easier. I can kind of differentiate it at a glance from my ADX as well. And uh, we notice that that uh, does uh, line up a little bit better. Now, we don't necessarily have to have the moving average overlaid onto our price bars. We can move that to a separate panel if we wanted to. Maybe to kind of uh, um, see how it looks against the ADX or uh, maybe another chart region if I had it available. So we can switch the chart region that a uh, study does show up within uh, just by right mouse clicking here and selecting studies. So if I select that moving average, we're going to go back to the settings tab here or the settings window. And now we want to go back to that first tab within the study settings, which is settings and inputs. Here we have an option for chart region. So if I select chart region, uh, I can bring that down to the three option. Uh, we know the ADX is in the second chart region, so I'm going to click three here, and that will bring us to kind of this third panel. 
So now we have that in the third panel. We can resize these just the same way as we did before. Uh, we'll just uh, use kind of these white lines that show up here, or white in my case. It may be different for you. Um, now I can also kind of have a third option, uh, just like we had the moving offer, uh, moving average overlaid on top of my price bars. I can overlay that onto my ADX as well. So I'm going to go back to that studies window. I'm going to choose the moving average. I'm going to select settings again. And then I'll just overlay that into the same chart region as my ADX. And you'll see that did uh, go into the same region. But what we notice now is that um, our lines have kind of flattened out. And that's because they're actually using the same price scale here. So the moving average, this blue line here, is very similar in value to the actual ES uh, value, which is quite high at, at, at the current standards here. So we're at, um, right around the 1550 area or so, 1560. And um, so we see that's actually quite a bit higher in value than the ADX. And that would work the same way if uh, we had that overlaid on our price bars as well, if they were kind of uh, a varying degree of value. So the way we can kind of um, get around that here is to switch something called our scale range. And we can access those options by right mouse clicking within the Y axis. So we see that we're at currently at scale range automatic. And what that means is that both the ADX and the moving average currently by default are using the same Y axis, meaning um, they're gonna flatten out so that both of them show um, and they're quite a bit different in value. But if we change it to scale range independent, we'll see that they uh, are actually independent in value and independent in scale range. So um, now we can kind of adjust them individually. I can move the ADX away from the actual uh, moving average and the moving average is um, not flattened out and neither is the ADX. You can kind of overlay them and see them uh, separately. So that's just to kind of uh, be able to use them and overlay them into the same chart region um, without having to um, use the same scale. So just kind of a handy tip there. So we are going to go through some more advanced settings here within the studies and some other things like how to copy studies from one chart to another or to another chart book. Uh, we're going to go do that in another video. So keep tuned uh, to our YouTube channel and other uh, avenues as well to see a little bit more in depth on how these studies work. If you do have any questions, please feel free to give us a call or visit our website at www.optimusfutures.com.